time. Yeah. Just, you know, it won't be as magic as it always has been. Sophie Henderson talked to me a little earlier on the programme. We're going to take a pause when we're back. I'll have the latest on the Ryder Cup, a really good start for Europe. All of that is coming up in a moment or two. Don't go away. On BBC News, the biggest African and international news stories. Focus on Africa. Live from Nairobi, this is Focus on Africa on BBC News. Our top stories. Niger's military junta says 12 soldiers have been killed in a militant attack in the southwestern region of Tilaberi. We find out why unsafe abortions are up to seven times higher in conflict zones in Africa than other environments. Also in the program, Africa's last absolute monarchy, Eswatini holds parliamentary elections where candidates are not allowed to be in political parties. Thanks for joining us on Focus on Africa, I'm Rhoda Oziambo. Serious complications from unsafe abortion are on the rise in conflict-affected areas than in more stable environments. That's according to the first ever study conducted by Doctors Without Borders and the Nigerian and Central African Ministries of Health. The report has concluded that unsafe abortions in these settings are up to seven times higher in conflict zones than other environments. The study focused on two referral hospitals in Africa, one in Bangui, that's in the Central African Republic, and a hospital in Jigawa State in northern Nigeria. In those hospitals, they found that severe abortion complications were five to seven times more frequent than in hospitals in more stable settings in Africa. The complications are mainly due to inadequate and inaccessible abortion and post-abortion care services, restrictive laws, higher risk of exposure to sexual violence, access to contraceptives, among others. Well, earlier on, I spoke to Dr. Eunice brookman Amesa, that's Ghana's former health minister, who is among this year's winners of the Right Livelihood Award, widely known as the Alternative Nobel Peace Prize. She's been recognized for pioneering discussions on women's reproductive rights in Africa and paving the way for liberalized abortion laws and improved safe abortion access. I began by asking her what this award means to her and her work and why it's important to have discussions about safe abortions. Take a listen. The military government in Niger says 12 soldiers have been killed in a militant attack in the southwestern region of Tilaberi. Thursday's attack comes as France prepares to pull out its troops from the country. Meanwhile, the expelled French ambassador to Niger, Sylvain Ité, has been speaking to local press on arrival in Paris. He says the situation in the final weeks of his stay was about trying to get food and water into his home by demonstrating a little ingenuity. He says the aim was to break him down. Let's go live now to the BBC's Chris Awokor, who's been following the developments in Nigeria's capital, Abuja. So, Chris, the Defence Ministry in Niger has put out a statement. What does it say? Thank you so much for your insights, Chris Awokor, in Abuja. Now, let's head over to Eswatini, Africa's last absolute monarchy, where voting has been ongoing as people choose their parliamentary representatives. More than half a million people registered to vote in a country of about 1.2 million people. But these elections are quite different as candidates are contesting as individuals as they are not allowed to be in political parties, which were banned in Eswatini in 1973. 59 members of the lower house of parliament will be elected, while King Swati III will appoint an additional 10. 
The MPs, however, only play an advisory role. Critics have dismissed the elections as a first meant to legitimize the monarchy. Results are expected to be announced on Saturday. Now let's bring in Dr. Ongama Mtimka, a political analyst at the Nelson Mandela University. So Dr. Mtimka, what do you make of these elections where candidates are to run as independent candidates? Thank you so much for your insights, Dr. Ongama Mtimka. And still to come on the program, we speak to the family of a young gymnast at the center of, ra of a racism dispute in Ireland. Welcome back to Focus on Africa. Now, the family of a young gymnast at the centre of a racism dispute in Ireland says there is no excuse for what happened to their daughter. The 10-year-old girl was the only gymnast in a competition lineup not to be handed a participation medal. Her parents speaking, are speaking publicly for the first time since the incident last year, and they have told the BBC about their fight for an apology from the governing body, Gymnastics Ireland. Meanwhile, the controversy attracted the attention of the multi-Olympic gold medal winning gymnast, Simone Biles. Here's our correspondent, Stephanie Hegarty. Last week, DRC's president, Felix Tshisekedi, called for the withdrawal of UN forces from the country to begin this year. He said they had failed in their two-decade-long mission to bring peace. He told the UN General Assembly he wanted troops to start leaving this December, even though the withdrawal had, be had been due to begin at the end of 2024. The BBC's Priya CP reports. Elsewhere, a 17-year-old boy has been charged with the murder of Elaine Andam, the schoolgirl who was stabbed to death in South London on Wednesday. The boy appeared at a youth court this morning. Our Home Affairs correspondent, Daniel Sandford, is there for us. And just a reminder of our top story, the military government in Niger says 12 soldiers have been killed in a militant attack in the southwestern region of Tilbury. Thursday's attack comes as France prepares to pull out its troops from the country. Meanwhile, the expelled French president, ambassador to Niger, Silva Ité, has been speaking to local press on arrival in Paris. He says the situation is in the final weeks, in the final weeks of his stay. Remember, you are free to get in touch with me and the rest of the Focus on Africa team. I'm on Twitter at Odiambo Roda. Don't forget to tag at BBC Africa. You can also email us your story ideas on Focus on Africa at BBC co.uk that's all the time we had for on today's program see you next week goodbye hello again stay with me for the next two minutes i'll update you on the weather prospect